I was flying an airplane at 14,000 feet above the clouds when I lost power to all of my navigation and communications. I flew from Tampa International to Dulles up in Virginia to pick up an airplane and fly it back to Florida. This particular airplane is a Piper Malibu. It's from the 1980s. It's an older aircraft. However, it was a one owner plane and always well taken care of. The previous owner would use it for small flights around the area of Virginia and New York, but never really took it cross country much. So this instance happened when I flew the plane from Manassas County Regional Airport back to Sarasota in Florida and ran into these issues. So I'm gonna to explain to you guys what happened and how we handled it and how we worked through the emergency so that it didn't become a bigger problem. So upon arrival to Manassas, it was my first time seeing the Malibu. And so we did a very thorough pre-flight inspection on it. We went through every little nut and bolt on the airplane, filled it full of fuel, did a weight and balance, and went through all of the procedures so that our due diligence was covered and we felt comfortable flying the aircraft back to Florida. I was with a pilot that was more experienced than me and so he was gonna be flying left seat since we were on an instrument flight plan back to Florida and would be flying through instrument conditions leaving the Manassas County area. We had a low ceiling that day of approximately 2,000 feet, so we knew that when we took off, we would have to fly through the clouds up to about 8,000 feet where we would have blue skies. Once we had blue skies, we could cruise that back to Florida. The cloud coverage started to dissipate in the Georgia area, so we knew that we were gonna be flying above the clouds from Virginia to Georgia, so approximately about three, two to three hours the flight started out well. We got into the airplane, loaded up, full of fuel, taxied to the runway, did our complete full run up, made sure everything was in the green, took off into the clouds, and away we went. We got up to our cruise altitude, we were chugging along, and then all of a sudden, everything shut off. The other pilot and I immediately grabbed the pilot operating handbook and began diagnosing the problem and troubleshooting. So we began doing things such as turning the avionics off and back on again, and there it was. Everything came back on, but then would shut off again about 20 to 30 seconds later. So everything would load up and then shut down. So we were now flying at this altitude above the clouds, unable to communicate with air traffic control. We were two hours into the flight at 14,000 feet. We had complete cloud coverage below us with about a seven or 800 foot ceiling below those clouds. So that if we, once we reached those clouds, if we were to pop out underneath them, we would only have about 700 feet to the ground, which wouldn't be ideal. So the other pilot and I started discussing a plan on what we were going to do. Since we were on a flight plan, we were no longer in touch with air traffic control who was keeping an eye on us. We initially proposed the idea of flying to an airport in Georgia that did not have cloud coverage and that we could land and diagnose the problem. At this point, we're flying along 14,000 feet. It's difficult to talk because our radios are off. Our navigation is off. And so the only way to communicate is to take our headsets off and essentially yell at each other. But one thing we did keep in mind was that our cell phones and our iPads do give you a GPS fix when you are in the air. Therefore, we could use ForeFly to identify exactly where we were at. We were able to turn the avionics back on momentarily. We got in touch with air traffic control and let them know we were diagnosing and troubleshooting this issue. At that time, we did not squawk an emergency code, nor did we squawk 7600. And the reason being is that our transponder was tied into this avionics failure as well. So if we were to squawk 7600, it would just disappear. After about two or three times of getting in touch with air traffic control for just a brief moment, I made a call to the other pilot. Instead, we should cancel our flight plan. We should cancel our flight plan and therefore fly under visual flight rules. Visual flight rules would allow us to continue to press on on our flight and continue towards Sarasota instead of landing at an unknown airport we had neither one of us had been to and working through weather conditions to get to the ground. The way I explain this to people who don't have experience in aviation is imagine you're driving through the desert and you're by yourself and you're cruising along and all of a sudden your GPS and your phone completely die. 
Are you going to pull over and stop and wait for somebody to come help you? Or are you going to continue to press on since your car is still driving? You have a paper map, you're able to navigate, the car is still driving, you still have your speedometer, your fuel gauge, and your vitals, keep pressing on. And so that's what we did. You can see on this flight radar map where we took off and started heading south, and then where the airplane starts to disappear and reappear and disappear and reappear, that's where our avionics were turning on and off. So you can see where we reached a point where we decided just to leave them off. I suspected that we were having an issue with an item overheating. And so we decided to leave it off and continue to fly under VFR flight rules back to Florida before getting in touch with air traffic control as we got closer to Sarasota. Since Sarasota is a towered airspace, we knew that we were going to have to make contact with them one way or another before entering that space. And so we got in touch with them, we flipped it on, let Sarasota Tower know, hey, we're a VFR airplane, we're working through some communications issues, can we get a cell phone number from you in case we have a failure as we enter your airspace? So they shared their tower phone number with us. We were able to continue towards Sarasota and our avionics did not fail us in the airspace. We were able to land safely. After I've had time to reflect on everything that's happened from that flight and knowing after having the airplane serviced, there was an inverter that goes from 12 volts to a low voltage system for the avionics. And that particular inverter was overheating and failing. The longer we would leave it off, the longer our, our avionics would come back on for. Obviously, since then, this, this piece of equipment has been replaced, but an absolutely incredible learning experience. Nobody ever wants to have to go through an emergency, and that's why you go through so much training to prepare for things like this. I hope you guys learned something today. It was a very nerve-wracking time when things were going down, but you have to stay calm, cool, level-headed, troubleshoot, work through the problem, make decisions, and make it happen. And that's what we did. We got home safe. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.